Welcome to Sam Conversation, an online program of South Asia Monitor. It is our pleasure to welcome Major General Ashok Kumar, Mr. Seva Medal, retired on this program to discuss his latest book, China Betrays Again. Um, I think his book is firstly very timely because we are at a stage where we've had 20 meetings, uh, 20 military meetings where since 2020 uh, and the PLA People's Liberation Army has not budged from whatever incursions that it made, uh, rather intrusions that it made in 2020. In actual fact, if 1962 is termed as the Chinese aggression, then what happened in 2020 was a Chinese aggression number two but with a difference, with a, with a new weapon already activated, a new weapon of biological warfare, COVID-19. Um, it seems, I think, <laughs> too much of a coincidence that what was being practiced that is, experimentation of biological warfare in many laboratories in China, and one including the Wuhan Institute of Virology, for a leak to occur from there to be accidental on a lot of research and uh, uh, discussion. Um, it, there's, there's every reason to believe that uh, it is not an accident. And, that, and uh, considering the, the mindset of the Chinese Communist Party, uh, you cannot put it past them to go in for such an option. Uh, anyway, I now will make a brief reference to my own book, China Bloodies Bulletless Borders, which was published last year. Um, this refers to what happened in 1967, the skirmishes that occurred in Natula and, uh, in 1967, uh, which ended over a few weeks with almost 400 Chinese PLA killed, many of their bunkers destroyed and a whole convoy of vehicles destroyed. Our losses in that were 70, 67 killed. And it is after that, that PLA and the Chinese Communist Party pressed very hard that let's not fire at each other. And um, we agreed. And from 67, for 50 years till Doklam, and now beyond Doklam, they have been taking great advantage of this agreement of not firing at each other. In 2020, when they attacked us in uh, May, it was with, um, it was a mockery of, uh, not firing at not firing at us with bullets. Uh, it was the use of uh, medieval barbaric weapons. Uh, in June, they went a step further by not just causing um, harm, uh, not just causing you know injury, 
but killing 20 of our brave hearts, including the commanding officer of the Biharis. Uh, and in all those 50 years since 67, uh, there's one occasion when they uh, caught, um, I think, four riflemen of five Assam rifles, but killed them not by bullets, but by, tor by torture. That again was uh, a great mockery of this uh, not using bullets. And all these 50 years and beyond, this line of actual control has been managed by boxing, pushing, pulling, grappling, mukkebazi, to put it in Hindi. Um, what, um, uh, Ash, um, uh, General Ashok, what should we start with? You have a lot in your book, which is uh, you know a collection of over fifty of your articles. Um, I leave it to your choice to to start with what is the whatever. Please, all yours. Okay, sir. Uh, at the outset, let me thank you and South Asia Monitor to give me this opportunity to at least highlight certain important aspects of the book which you are holding in your hands. Uh, the book has been titled uh, China Betrays Again uh, with a deep analysis of Chinese actions over a period of time. The moment you talk of China's betrayal, every Indian remembers what had happened in 1962. Uh, despite our Panchi agreement with China, the rhetoric of Hindi Chini Bhai Bhai and out of the way support by our government at that point of time to China, it backstabbed us in 1962. And the fallout of 1962 has not been very pleasant. It is something <laughs> as and when we all remember, we feel bad about it. And Thereafter, the journey has been uh, totally uh, different. I think we learned our lessons quite well in 1962. Uh, China has been propagating in the world media that after the 1962 war of close to a month, it undertook unilateral withdrawal. It did take under uh, unilateral withdrawal, but it did not go back to the pre-conflict positions. And therefore, even as of now, it is occupying large areas beyond the pre-conflict positions of 1962. As you also highlighted, the 1967, we gave Chinese a good beating in Nathula and Chola under General Sagat Singh. Thereafter, in 1987, Samdurangchu, we again responded very, very strongly under then General Sundarji. And 2017 in Doklam, uh, where it was a uh, Bhutanese territory, but since we have a security connect with Bhutan, we also checkmated the Chinese advancements. However, when the relationship was quite buoyant between uh, uh, two of us, despite the uh, border disagreements and the off and on skirmishes at the line of actual control. The trade was heavily in favor of China uh, as against uh, being in our favor. We had a reasonable number of bilateral agreements to maintain peace and tra tranquility and also number of confidential, uh, the confidence building measures in place. Despite all that, China disregarded all those things and in April, May 2020, it backstabbed us again by transgressing at multiple locations in Eastern Ladakh. So the book has tried to find out that the second betrayal, has it got any connect with the first betrayal or not? Or is it one of those things which has happened because of multiple reasons? 
or there is a serious behavioral pattern in Chinese national uh, buildup and the people who are at the helm of affairs. What I have concluded by my study and my writings in this book that China came out of the dynastic rule in 1911. Initially, it was the effort of the ROC, uh, which is the current day uh, custodian of uh, Taiwan. Uh, subsequently, uh, the, the ROC came with the nationalistic favor. It was pro-democratic uh, organization. But as it moved ahead, then the PRC constituents were born, which were the communists. So both of these, in their own way, uh, were pro-nationalistic uh, as per their conception. But they fought multiple times amongst each other. They also unified together when Japanese uh, captured large areas of China during World War II. Then they fought again. And finally, after Mao's long march, uh, the PRC succeeded in commanding the country on 1st October 1949. What is important here that India has already gained its independence on 15th August 1947 close to two years before uh, Chinese uh, gaining their current form of government. <laughs> Thereafter, we see from 1st October 1949, China has pursued a systematic expansionist agenda. In fact, when it was born as a nation on 1st October 1949, its geographic limits were very, very marginal. But thereafter, it went in taking over Xinjiang, uh, Tibet, the Inner Mongolia, Henan Islands, and number of other areas. And currently it has taken the current shape. It also considers itself as the real uh, successor of uh, ROC. And therefore it feels the Taiwan must unify with its mainland. And currently it is making all kinds of effort uh, to do that, which is a major challenge which is going to emerge in days to come. So I have found that this is a pattern which has become the character of China. And unless we understand and take necessary action at national level, we will not be able to handle this kind of challenge. And towards that, I realized not only in the defense forces, more so in the youth, amongst the other stakeholders and decision makers, the knowledge about China is uh, really vague. In fact, if you ask anyone, uh, even a college going student or a university, this thing, or even people who are doing the uh, studies in the defense and strategic studies, what do they, they know about China? They will limit few words only at best about 1962 and nothing beyond. So it is important that whole of a nation approach is developed to checkmate Chinese design because why whole of a nation is uh, important? Because this is a model which had succeeded us in 1971 uh, war, wherein we in 14 days time liberated East Pakistan and a new nation was born. Of course, we also captured uh, more than 93,000 prisoners of war uh, which is a uh, world history, you know, by all standards. So this book attempts to bring out the historical background from 1949 onwards till current President Xi Jinping took over power in 2013. What have been contribution and uh, focus of different presidents in their time of socio-political development, economic development, the military development, and how they have you know, contributed in the uh, expansionist agenda of the country on a sustained basis, and how it is pursuing that even as of now. And by analyzing uh, China, it emerges very, very clearly that this is a country which cannot repeat, cannot be trusted, and therefore, as against focusing on its intentions, we must create capacities based on the capabilities. We must have adequate capability to respond to the Chinese de uh, designs. Uh, India, in any case, is a peace-loving country. We have never so far uh, gone in controlling in other uh -huh. neighbors 
and other countries. But should somebody else do, we should be able to respond appropriately. And thereafter, uh, not only this, this uh, book also uh, analyzes China's uh, land boundary law, uh, which is very, very important, sir. Uh, this law was passed in October 21, and it is in vogue from 1st January 2022. Now, uh, this law has got certain uh, special provisions applications of which is going to convert the uh, issue of boundary negotiation uh, almost close for the uh, you know boundary per se uh, it will attempt to uh, sanctify line of actual control uh, to the border because it now has uh, indicated that the areas which are in its control that are related to its sovereignty. So territorial issue has got converted in the sovereignty issue. In fact, when we signed uh, an agreement with China in 2005, uh, there was a provision that all future boundary negotiations will factor the aspirations of the settled populations on the border. Having signed that at that point of time, and for quite some time, we were feeling quite okay. Uh, because China was insisting uh, on uh, getting the Tawang in its pool uh, for multiple reasons. And since in the area of Tawang, we have a large amount of settled population in Tawang down to uh, its northern areas where we uh, had the first many, um, in, fired in Kinjiman and beyond. But in, subsequently in fact, that... Um, I, at this point, I will request you to just uh, give me a a uh, minute or two because Tawang is a very, very, um, very pertinent um, uh, factor that you brought here. When Bob Khating, Major Dilangna Khating, who took the exhibit, you know, uh, uh, who made that um, expedition to Tawang, it was very clear whatever he did, he all the uh, he, we were able to you know hoist the tricolor there after all the gaumburas very um, very enthusiastically said that they would like to be part of india and that was mr nehru was not very happy about that but there was nothing that could be done at that point. Uh, what has happened, you know, uh, you very well brought it brought it out that you know in 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 your uh, in your title you say China betrays again. It's not just again, but again and again and again. It has been you know betraying. Uh, as you very well brought out that now it's trying to legalize what um, it's built a lot of villages, you know, in uh, territory which is technically ours, even if that line of actual control is, is uh, disputed. But in its disputed state, there is a certain, there's a certain alignment that we say, this is yours, this is ours. They, and the uh, sad thing about it is that we don't seem to have done much about it. The Indian Army is absolutely capable of, uh, you know, countering. Despite the fact that they may be, um, they they may have they may have more numbers, they may have more um, armaments, but we still, I say that we have the capability of countering every move of theirs. But we have not done so because there is a, a, a probably you know New Delhi um, has a, an ankush on that. Uh, our occupation of Kailash range was a master stroke, which hurt them. Which and the pity is that they were again able to you know, uh, make us uh, agree to withdraw. We, I have often 
said that you know for how long can you manage this border bulletlessly i'm not i'm not being trying to be a warmonger but for how long if, if when they killed 20 of our uh, brave soldiers we retaliated without arms we of course killed not just 43 as was you know unofficially or whatever brought out then there are reports of having uh, of our having killed almost close to 100 unconfirmed but quite possible uh, but ironically all that was again by sheer you know unarmed combat they are very very sensitive to you know body bags that is why they pressed very hard for uh, you know uh, let's not that let's not fire at each other and in 2020 again it became very obvious that they do not have the capability of even fighting us unarmed in, in, in other in other ways Absolutely, sir. So I, I shall take you back to that agreement of 2005. So we were feeling quite okay. But that is the clause which now it has overturned on us, wherein it has got more than 600 model villages established or close yeah. to line of actual control. All yeah. along, it's not only in Eastern Ladakh, but it is all along. And not only it is trying to put Tibetan population in that, it has brought in Han Chinese from the mainland and they are also settling. And with this kind of settlement that those locations are getting sanctified and uh, closing the options of negotiations. So what should be done by the Indian government? In fact, all my you know pieces which I have written in this, in majority of the cases, I have tried to give certain executable recommendations so that if those are followed, uh, our the profile will improve. Uh, government of India has already come out with the concept of vibrant villages. There is enhanced focus on that. But I think, you know, there is much more which needs to be done. Of course, with the current table of deployment uh, on both sides of line of actual control, more than, than you know, I think 50,000 troops are deployed from both sides. And slowly and steadily, the line of actual control is moving towards LOCification. Now, what are going to be the implications of that? The large number of troops deployment and number of those things have also been covered in this uh, book. Uh, I have also looked at uh, certain uh, negotiations which have happened between us and the Chinese. We have had diplomatic negotiations, political negotiations, military level negotiations with the Ministry of External Affairs and anything and everything. And in that, I have tried to observe a new phenomena, phenomena of the uh, transgressions uh, getting resolved, wherein we have accepted a buffer zone, an absolutely new term. While no, no, that uh, buffer, buffer zone, zone absolutely, that bu buffer zone is so, is of uh, is a very very deceptive term. So, they, so the uh, so the buffer zone, sir, had let's say we had we gone in for the uh, final boundary settlement, and we had agreed on a buffer zone for maintaining the sanctity and patrolling and all that. That would be perfectly fine. But for having the buffer zone for line of actual control, I feel it is a little uh, counterproductive to our national interest. But I can't say that with and a buffer zone was, which covers only what our part of this side of the line of actual control. Correct. So uh, maybe maybe the decision makers have more inputs and this may be a process of getting resolved later. So that can be commented later. But as of now, it is appearing uh, disadvantageous the way how I look at it. Uh, in addition to that, I have looked at what all is happening in India, Pacific, uh, Indo-Pacific, uh, in South China and East China. What are the conflict of China with those countries? How, for the first time in the history of uh, drawing borders, uh, we have the territorial borders being uh, drawn, but uh, China is trying to uh, do the territorialization of the maritime boundaries. It had gone in on the, you know, initially 11 dash line, brought down to uh, 9 dash line, uh, giving some concession to Vietnam after mutual agreement. Now it has put, you know, another uh, dash on the eastern side of Taiwan, so that Taiwan is also included in that. Now again, it is back to 10 dash line. 
and number of other actions in total disregard of international and you know regional and bi mutual uh, agreements it has also attempted to write a piece on the uh, siachen dispute uh, because uh, there was a time in 1992 when we uh, came quite close to resolving this and there have been you know progress between india and pakistan that pakistan ratifies you know on dotted line our positions and you know things like that then you know it can be resolved but i think the way the karakoram highway has gone the way china has now developed the cpec and bri <laughs> in pakistan occupied kashmir which is you know rightfully ours and the way now it is drawing a fresh alignment of a national highway close to the line of actual control the way it has transcend number of areas in isla dak i think the you know indian army and indian nation cannot afford now to move out of uh, siachen you know that is how you know i infer uh, on uh, that sir of course it has also covered multiple aspects of the uh, china taiwan imbroglio and how uh, that you know conflict has come up what is likely to happen and the prime purpose of this book was sir, that the i think we all should know uh, china much more than uh, what we know so that in our respective spheres we can contribute towards the national effort as and when that you know uh, time comes india is already on a rising curve uh, on the uh, economic uh, stage it has uh, already reached the fifth spot moving towards the third spot and the way we have conducted g20 summit in uh, delhi the way we have handled our relationship with the usa mm -hmm. and russia together i think we are on a cusp of you know between uh, not only a regional power but a global power but the disruptions from china has got a great potential to put everything you know in a adverse uh, yeah, domain you you said it and, uh... and it is towards that we all have to join hands to empower our nation no you you very rightly brought this out that uh, you know we are doing brilliantly by god's grace in uh you know in in so many uh, um, aspects but the dichotomy there is that in um, this is one you see when your when your borders are uh, not secure then uh, all that is in danger absolutely when your borders and i am now uh, saying not only the line of actual control but the line of control also we is a great thing that we abrogated uh, 370 but after that there is a there is a fresh uh, which um, you know despite pakistan being in very very Uh, um, in uh, in a abysmal state, the the uh, Pakistan Army and the ISI's efforts to uh, to try all kinds of new stunts in the valley have not ended. Not only the valley, but uh, the, um, uh, you know areas uh, no, no, north of uh, Jammu also. In fact, sir, uh, you have rightly brought out uh, issues of Pakistan. This book also looks at the uh, China-Pakistan nexus. and in uh, my next book which is going to come in mid february uh, it is you know titled uh, indian chainings on the global stage where it looks at the entire dynamics of all other neighbors except china because china has been reasonably covered on this so i i think the the uh, the youth and all other stakeholders need to know china and its moves so that we do oh, yes yes no doubt no doubt part. and uh, on on the maritime front again we've got uh the indian navy has proved that it has an, a very good outreach and uh if we 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 had um, a political bureaucratic um, uh, you know set up where till 1971 we proved to be uh, sea blind you know <laughs> it's it's for the first time we used the navy in uh, 1971 and with devastating effect um that's another story worth uh, uh, you know going into but um uh, which uh, its presence and outreach in the indian ocean region is very good but it's it, again we are not making and we we may be part of the court but 
all that is not really being uh, used in a way to you know uh, to to stymie china to um, it, it it again seems to be making its uh, uh, and here it's not just india but it's the other other quad uh, countries also absolutely sir i uh, all i can say is that as far as india is concerned i think we we um, uh, we, we we have to refer to some of what you have said resolve the sachin dispute um india's gains with active line of actual control it's a momentous opportunity rocket missile force an inescapable indian necessity india must focus focus on ammunition till full indigenization no doubt forward sustainment bases in an inescapable necessity why xi jinping's third term as president rings alarm bells for india we must uh, maintain the momentum of our modernization and uh, 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 at uh, uh, there's 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 you know a lot of things that need to be done in this direction and also maintain a, a, a much more assertive stance in our diplomatic dealings with uh, china i think the now the time has come that we should remind china and the world at large that it's not an india china border that we are talking about it's the india tibet border absolutely sir absolutely huh? tibet was swallowed completely by china and it couldn't stand the fact that we gave the dalai lama and the, and the tibetans uh, you know sanctuary in india but because you we cannot afford to let the crazy attitude of that i mean it's it's um, uh, it's not just uh, hegemonic but it's uh, a kind of a mad <laughs> unreasonable uh, you know unreasonable hegemonic uh, uh, attitude we we have to put us uh, you know uh, um, um, we have to neutralize this in and we have the we have the capability and in, in the fact, in the diplomatic uh, field we are it will be worth pondering that when we became independent on 15th august 1947 Tibet was a sovereign uh, nation by itself. Absolutely, it had diplomatic Absolutely. relations. It had you know flags, yes. anything, everything yes. it has. And yes. therefore, yes. as you rightly brought out, it is India-Tibet border and not India-China border, and that should be our bottom line. In fact, you'll be surprised to know, sir, that the current day PRC got a seat in United Nations as late as in 1976. Till that <laughs> time, it was being represented by Republic of China, which is current day Taiwan. So yes. uh, I think it's time to put things in right perspective, uh, so that not only uh, Chinese but the whole world comes to acknowledge the harsh facts, and then we advance our preparations along those lines. Um. Uh. With the uh, you know a, a restriction on uh, the time frame. Um. I will. Uh, um i'll first begin by thanking um major general ashok kumar for bringing out some very pertinent points which uh brought out in his book and uh the there's, there's no doubt that india will have to keep preparing its keep maintaining its momentum in its modernization of the armed forces and at the same time uh, start becoming much more assertive in dealing with the people liberation army and the chinese communist party thank you
Thank you very much, sir. So kind of you for sparing your time and giving me the platform of South Asia Monitor. Thank you very much okay. and hope it is going to reach to a lot of listeners. Thank you very much, sir.